My boyfriend has done a great job of introducing me to the wonderful world of video games. It's all art. It's, uh, that's just a trash can. It's just a trash can. Yeah, yeah. But he's been playing Pokemon since day one and outgrew it sometime around day 6,000, while I've only played Let's Go Eevee. The series' repetitive formula is not yet repetitive for a newcomer like me, the effortless turn-based combat is not yet effortless for a novice like me, and the elementary RPG mechanics are not yet elementary for a nincompoop like me. That's why watching every Pokemon Direct for Sword and Shield felt like this. The latest entry in the series lets you pick your outfit. This time, it's not just tops and bottoms, but a wide variety, including outerwear and gloves, or put on a little makeup. There's a lot more to becoming a champion than simply honing your battle skills. You've got to look the part too, don't you think? However, despite being perfectly content just waggling a feather at Vulpix, I am not unmindful that a lot of players wish Pokemon grew up with them the same way Mario and Zelda did. Even from my childlike perspective, these games appear frozen in time. So when it was announced that a mainline title would finally be released on a home console, everyone justifiably prepared for evolution. Would the power of the Nintendo Switch and decades of creative progress be utilized to develop the Mario 64, the Metroid Prime, or the Breath of the Wild this franchise desperately needed, and no, they didn't even try. I'm gonna kill myself! Wow. I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault! Pokemon Sword and Shield have indefensible graphics, outdated gameplay, and shamelessly lackadaisical dialogue. But oh, look at it! Oh, yay! Let's get it. This baby game looks like shit, dude. So, this is a review of Pokemon Shield, and a review of what it's like to live with someone who plays Pokemon Sword. This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Now I decided to go with Shield because I felt bad for Shield, like no one else would want it, which is the exact same reason I chose Sobble. Also, he's the cutest Pokemon ever and I loved him like a son, even through his teenage emo phase. But the man he became made me question where I went wrong as a parent. <laughs> Sorry. Oh God, it's Rango. <laughs> Why is he sexy? <laughs> Go back. <laughs> Return it, please. I tried. I really tried to appreciate what they were going for with this design. I just couldn't shake the feeling that he was going to wear my clothes and stab someone in the shower. Ew, get... Ooh. No, oh, no! Oh, God, he's the creepiest thing ever. I hated that. I adore the other Pokemon in this game, though. Angel, look at him. Oh! Coming. Now, I don't know which ones are new, and I don't know their actual names, but I have a banjo, Garlic, Alan Poe, Granola, Dr. Dre, and a Jalapeno. My favorite thing to do is set up Pokemon Prison Yard, where my inmates can take a break from their Pokecells and remember what freedom smelled like before I arrested them for being too cute. Admittedly, I did start to wonder, why is this in the game? I imagine they spent a large amount of time on all the unique animations that happen here, as well as the 151 curries you can cook. It really seems a bit excessive, especially considering that every other aspect of the game could have used a lot more love and attention. I would prefer Pokemon Nintendogs was a spin-off title that explores the concept's full potential, while the Pokemon Sword and Shield developers focused on more important things like the ground and the trees and, you know, the core gameplay? In theory, an RPG where you catch instead of kill the enemies you encounter, then train them, earn their trust, and even form emotional bonds with them is just freaking genius. It was literally a $95 billion idea. The imagination can run wild thinking of how all that money and 20 years of practice could improve upon it to create a modern role-playing masterpiece. But I see little imagination here beyond what I saw in Generation 1. It's still just a big game of rock, paper, scissors. If they throw out paper, you throw out scissors. If they throw out scissors, you throw out rock. If they throw out rock, you throw out fighting, grass, ground, steel, or water. I'm supposed to be a Pokemon trainer, right? Then how come the only training I need to do to beat a gym leader is find one Pokemon with one move that will be super effective and then just spam it while I watch TV? Here are the nominees for gaming. <laughs> The completionist. Imagine trying to fight an enraged bear with a paperclip. The Game Theorists. Girlfriend Reviews. This is a new segment I'm gonna call Girlfriend Tips. Alright, and the streaming award for gaming goes to...
Whoa! The game theorist! Dang it! And even though my other Pokemon do absolutely nothing, they all gain multiple levels, learn new moves, and evolve for just sitting around in their Pokeballs. Most of them were born in the dark, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then it was nothing to me but blinding. However, they did take that $95 billion and 20 years of technological progress to add camera controls. Wow, you can move it all the way around and kind of up and down a little. No way. But don't get too excited. You can only do it in this completely optional and open area that they attach to a 3DS game so you'd buy it on Nintendo Switch. The formulaic and linear map design that is excusable on a nine-year-old handheld device feels totally out of its league amongst the gorgeous and expansive titles released on the Switch. especially the ones published by Nintendo. The story along the way might have redeemed the primitive exploration if it wasn't 95% about this dork who interrupts you at the entrance and exit of almost every single route and town to cycle through the same two animations while telling you in a hundred different ways that he's gonna beat Leon, the undefeated champion who dresses like the Burger King for some reason. Hop is that kid at school who is really nice to you and really wants to be your friend, but you just hate his f***ing guts. Hop tucks in his shirt. Hop tucks in his shirt to his gym shorts, loser. And his Pokemon is that other kid from school. He He's looks a like ninja. a ninja. No, dude, he looks like the the kid at school who dressed like Naruto. <laughs> wow, look at him the go. The weird kid who he just, he, did, he a just Naruto did a Naruto run, run dude. <laughs> Listen, I loved my time with this game because I love Pokemon. I'd be lying if I said this was an objectively good game though. I would highly recommend it to a child or even a newcomer to video games like myself. For anyone who likes a challenge, good graphics, an interesting plot, creative game design, or having fun, I'd say they might consider it their worst purchase of 2019. After only playing a remake of the first generation and this latest generation, I'm already underwhelmed by the series and frankly, another experience so similar would bore me. For my boyfriend who has played many entries and spin-offs in the series. Pokemon Sword was more than boring. It was insulting. And living with him while he played involved lots of rants like this. <clears throat> my name is Shelby, and I will now be performing a monologue by my boyfriend. Five score years ago, a great developer in whose shadow all media stands today released a video game. Since that momentous little cartridge entered my atomic purple Game Boy Color, I have had a Pokemon dream. A Pokemon dream that the monsters in my pocket would move to home console and evolve into the shiniest legendaries. I say to you today, girlfriend, that we may have paid a console game price for Sword and Shield, I still have a Pokemon dream. But there's a reason. There's a reason Pokemon sucks, and it's the same reason it will never be fixed. Because the owners of this franchise don't want that. I'm talking the real owners now. Forget Game Freak. Game Freak is put there to give you the idea that Pokemon is still a video game. It's not. It's merchandise. The big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions have long since profited most from plushies, t-shirts, Funko, drinkware, pins, keychains, and wallets, all paid for with a Pikachu Visa, and any actual media is just a commercial. They've got Game Freak by the Pokeballs. They spend millions of dollars a year marketing to get what they want, but let me tell you what they don't want first. They don't want a population of gamers capable of critical thinking. They don't want gamers who are smart enough to sit around the TV and think about how they're playing the exact same game that targeted them 20 years ago. You know what they want? They want obedient gamers. gamers who are just loyal enough to pre-order and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shorter games for a higher cost, the low quality graphics, the recycled animations, the end of post-game content, and the vanishing Pokemon it took a lifetime to collect. They want you to store them in a subscription-based Pokedex for a monthly ransom. And you know something? They'll get it. The table has tilted, girlfriend. The game is rigged. Yet we continue to pay a company that doesn't care about video games. And that's what they count on. The fact that gamers will probably remain willfully ignorant ignorant of the copy-pasted interactive commercial being put on shelves every year. Sword and Shield's record-breaking sales prove that the owners of this franchise know the truth. It's called the Pokemon Dream. Because you have to be asleep to believe it. <laughs> but oh, look at it. Oh, yay. Let's get it. And speaking of commercials, here's one for Squarespace. Creating a website for your business with Squarespace is super easy. Using any of their beautiful templates, you'll quickly be the owner of a website with full access to analytics like page views, traffic sources, and more. Want to make sure your business is being seen by the right people? Squarespace uses all the best practices for search engine optimization without needing any extra plugins. In addition to configuring third-party domains, customers can purchase domains directly from Squarespace. Create a powerful visual experience on your website 
website using video backgrounds. Communicate with customers using Squarespace's integrated commenting system. Schedule posts in advance and enjoy the extra time you have to focus on your business. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your website, check out squarespace.com slash girlfriend reviews and add code girlfriend reviews for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right guys, thanks for watching. And guess what? We did a face reveal. If you want to see photos of us on the red carpet at the streamies, head over to our Twitter or Instagram and check it out. And make sure to subscribe on Twitch because we'll probably set up a face cam soon and do a just chatting session so we can get to know each other a little better. Alright, thanks again. Bye!